Next, I, oh, that's not true. Hey, it's Sue in the restricted section. Today I'm going to do a July wrap up slash little book haul because I clearly can't go a month without buying books. But let's get into the wrap up. It shouldn't, this is probably going to be a short wrap up because I've already talked about most of these books. But I read um, six books, completed six books this month. The first one was The Song of the Forest by Colin McKay. Um, I already did a full review of this, which I will link down below if you're interested. Um, I also made myself look like a wood nymph for it for no reason. Uh, so that happened. This book is about a village in Scotland um, set in the Dark Ages and the village is attacked by some invaders and um, they decide to build um, what's essentially a golem to help protect their village. And this was a really good book. Uh, I gave it four stars. I would like to reread it because I feel like if I had my full focus on it, it might have been five stars for me. But I really liked it. I do recommend it. Uh, the next book I finished was Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. I listened to this on audiobook. Uh, because I needed to read it by my book club meeting because it was our book club book this month and I knew I wasn't going to be able to finish it if I read it myself so I listened to it on audiobook which was a huge mistake <laughs> because I hated hated the audio audiobook. I don't really care for audiobooks generally anyway but this one was especially annoying because Jenny Lawson narrates it and she is annoying. <laughs> she talks like a valley girl. I'm not a great listener but it was even harder to focus on her because the book just the beginning of the book was okay the end of the book was okay the middle was super rambly and listening to her ramble was awful. <laughs> I ended up giving the book three stars even though honestly if I were just judging the audiobook I would have given it one star because I it it was terrible but the parts that I was able to like focus on and listen to were actually good. They were funny, made me laugh out loud a few times, but just listening to it was awful. So I feel like if I'd read it myself, I probably would have at least given it three stars. So that's the rating I gave it. I don't know, maybe I should have just been honest and I mean, I feel like I was being honest <laughs> because it really just was that I hated the audiobook. I don't know. Whatever. Um, and the third book that I finished this month was Winter by Marissa Meyer, which was the last book in the Lunar Chronicles series. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a satisfying conclusion to the series, and I gave it four stars. I gave most of the books. I gave All But Ferris, which I did not care for, four stars, because they were all solid, enjoyable reads to me. And then the next few books I read were for the book Tubathon, so I'm not going to talk about them much because I already talked about them in our book Tubathon wrap up, which I will also link below. Um, the first one was Empire by David Dunwoody. Hated it. <laughs> one star. Next was 666 by Jay Anson. Um, this was pretty decent. I gave it three stars. Not bad if you like horror. This one's this one's pretty good. The only other book I finished for book Tubathon was The Flowers of War by Gaylene Yan, which is translated from Chinese by Nikki Harmon. And then I also watched the movie. I think I'm going to do a full review of this and the movie because I kind of had a lot of things to say about it. I cut a lot of them out of our book too with Unwrap Up because it was just too long. It was pretty good. I gave it three stars as well. I had sort of mixed feelings about it, but yeah, I'll look out for a review of this if you're interested in hearing more about it. Uh, those are the only books that I completed. I did read half of the Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I probably will finish this by the end of the month. I have like 150 pages left, but um, so far I'm really loving it. It's great. Love Tolkien. And then I also read a little bit in Consider the Lobster by David Foster Wallace. You might recall that I chose this book to take with me on a work trip to Florida. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really have much time to read on that trip because I was just working the whole time. And then by the time I got back to my room at the hotel. I was exhausted and just slept. So far I am enjoying this so I will finish this. I'll probably pick this back up as soon as I finish The Hobbit. All right so that's all the books I finished so let's get into the book haul. First I went to a used bookstore here called Hooked on Books and I tried to trade in my books from my unhaul. Unfortunately they only took four of them um, so I didn't get that many books traded in to trade in but I did pick up a few 
more while I was there. Um, the first one was kind of a fail on my part because I wanted a copy of The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas that was not abridged because my copy that I had was like heavily abridged. And I saw this one and I looked and looked and looked in the store and did not find any place where it said it was abridged. Although I kind of thought like it's supposed to be longer than this, right? It's supposed to be longer, but I thought maybe the font's really small or something. So I got it and I took it home and then I saw teeny tiny. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but teeny tiny here at the bottom where you can barely see it. It says abridged edition. So I was like, fuck. So now I have two abridged editions of The Count of Monte Cristo. So that sucks. But uh, I also picked up The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. Um, just wanted to read it. Sounds like I've seen the movie. I, honestly, I didn't actually care that much for the movie. I saw the newer one with uh, Gerard Butler and Emmy Rossum, I think is her name. I didn't actually like it that much, but I don't think it was the story that I disliked. I honestly was... Gerard Butler's singing was so bad that it was distracting. <laughs> so <laughs> that was my problem with it. But um, sounds like a cool story that I will enjoy. Next I picked up another classic and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and yes this was like the best cover that they had. Yeah, but I've heard very mixed things about this so I was really interested to read it because some people say it's their favorite book and some people absolutely fucking hate it and couldn't even get through it so definitely want to check that one out. And then the last one I got from the used bookstore was Sailor Song by Kim Kesey. Um, I read One Slur of the Cook Cuckoo's Nest uh, not that long ago and loved it, so I thought I'd pick up something else by him. So this is set in a fishing village in Alaska. I honestly don't really know that much else about it, but I mainly just wanted to read some more of Ken Kesey's writing because I loved One Slur of the Cuckoo's Nest so much. Next I picked up a couple of books from Barnes & Noble. The first one is The Master and Margarita by <clears throat> Mikhail Bulgakov, and this was translated by Mira Ginsberg. Um, this is, I think this is considered a classic, I'm not sure, I've heard, I've heard a lot about it recently, um, oddly enough, but, um, it has something to do with the devil <laughs> and a cat. So, you know, I'm sold. Two of my favorite things. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't love the devil. <laughs> I do love cats, though. Uh, and then the other one I got at Barnes & Noble was The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley. Um, I believe Cameron Hurley is a sci-fi writer. So this is about women in like geek culture and the sort of struggles that they go through. And you know, she's writing about her personal str struggles being a science fiction writer and that's definitely, you know, kind of a boys club. So I've heard really great things about it. Then, could a month go by without me buying something from Book Outlet? No. The first one I picked up was one I actually got for my boyfriend, but I'm probably going to read it too because I like beer. And it's the ultimate book of beers. And it has um, craft beers from all around the world. It's got pictures and the little stuff about them, so I thought that'd be cool. The next was a bit of a cover by, and it's The Book of Gold Leaves by Mira Wahid. Um, yeah, I was definitely drawn in by the cover. It does sound like an interesting book, though. So this is about um, a boy and a girl who are have a secret romance, and then I think they're sort of threatened to be torn apart by this the violence in, that's uh, happening in the city. So sounds like it'll be good. And the last one I got from Book Outlet was How to Build a Girl by Catelyn Moran. Um, this is about a teenage girl who kind of shames herself on TV somehow, and then she decides to reinvent herself as like sort of a bad girl. And uh, I've heard kind of mixed things about it, but we'll see how I like it. And then the last book I bought this month was one I got from Target because I just had the hankering to buy a book and I was in Target, so I got one. And it actually was on sale for like 30% off, I think. I took the sticker off. But it's The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, and I've heard tons and tons of people on booktube talk about this book and say they love it, and it sounds like something I would really enjoy, and I've been wanting to read it for a while, but I just haven't done it yet, so since it was on sale, I picked it up. Um, I know this is kind of a love story, it also has to do, I think it's also kind of magical 
realism, if I'm not mistaken. Although I've said, as I've said in the past, I'm not really sure how to define magical realism, but it's something along those lines. There's definitely some magical stuff in here. But it sounds really interesting, and I'm not sure that I've ever heard anyone say that they did not like it. So I'm hoping that I will love it as well. But that's it. That's all I read and all I bought in July. Uh, Megan will not have a video up this week, unfortunately. Um, she took an impromptu trip to her homeland of Michigan, so uh, yeah, she's not gonna have time to put anything up. And we're not gonna have any um, dual, any videos with both of us up next week either, but I'll probably post an extra video of just myself. So hopefully you like seeing my face. That's gonna be it for me. Um, Thanks everyone for watching. If you're not subscribed, do it. And uh, there'll be links below where you can find myself and Megan other places online. And I'll see you next time. Bye.